All right, today we're going to talk about something super exciting. It's linear measure. And what linear measure means is the measure of lines. All right, so I was walking down the street the other day, and I came up to a stick, and I noticed that the stick was three feet long. So I thought to myself, what if I broke that stick into two separate pieces. One of the pieces was one foot and I discovered quickly that the next piece would have to be two foot. I took it even further and I broke it into three separate pieces, each being one foot long. So one thing I noticed was that no matter how many pieces I broke the stick up into, each of them would always add up to three. Now basically linear measure is just taking the different smaller pieces of a line and adding them up and we always know the small pieces of a line are going to add up to equal the whole. Alright let's do a quick example. Let's say we had a line here and on the line we had the points A, B, and Z. Let's say we knew that AB was equal to 2, we knew that AZ was equal to 4, and we wanted to find out what is the measure of BZ. So whenever you're doing any type of linear measure, or even when we get to angles, you always want to try and label. So let's start here. AB is equal to, well I know AB is this distance here, so I'm going to separate that out and I'm going to say AB is equal to 2. Now I know that AZ is equal to 4. AZ is this whole long distance here, and I know that is going to be equal to 4. Now I don't know what BZ is, so I can take my B to Z here, and whenever you don't know the measure of something, we can always put in a variable uh, to help a setup equation. So here I'm just going to put an x. I'm trying to solve for bz. So here for b to z, I labeled it with an x because I don't know what it is. Now we know from linear measure that the small pieces always add up to the big piece. So here I can write 2 plus our next small piece is x. And that's going to have to equal our big piece here, which is 4. Now if we wanted to solve this out, we could subtract 2 from both sides. It's going to go away. We're going to get x equals 2, and we're done. We know bz is going to equal 2. All right, we're almost done. We have one more really important concept. We're going to be using this all year, so write it down. Uh, put a sticky note on your mirror, whatever you got to do. You're going to want to remember this. Uh, the term is congruent. What congruent means is that two things have the same measure. We're going to use this symbol a lot. We'll talk more on that later. This means that uh, something is congruent to something else. It's like an equal sign with a little squiggly on top. Okay, so as far as linear measure goes, when two lines have an equal measure, we're going to have a little dash on them. So since these two have the same number of dashes, we know that these lines have equal measure. Okay, so let's take a quick quiz here. Uh, let's say I wanted you to find the line that was congruent to this line up here. So I'm going to look, I'm going to count, we've got one, two, three dashes. Let's find the other one with three dashes. Oh, it's way over here. So we know that these two lines have the same measure. They are congruent, right? Okay, let's say we wanted to find out what line is congruent to this one. Oh, we see two dashes, so we can go way over here. This one also has one, two, so we know that these two lines have the same measure. Those two lines, we can take their distance and set them equal to each other. All right, pay close attention to this one. This one's a little tricky. This has one line, but it's broken up into two separate parts. So within, he, within this line, we've got one dash here, 
and we've got one dash here. So we know that uh, the two separate pieces of this line, this distance here, is congruent, is equal to this distance here. All right, now you've got all the knowledge you need. Let's try some example problems. So you might have a problem that looks like this. Find the variable and st. So they're asking for two things. They're asking one for the variable. They're asking two to find st. Remember, st means the distance between s and t. Find the variable and st if s is between r and t. Okay, so that's telling me a couple important things right away. I know I don't have a picture, so I'm going to want to draw one. They're telling me S is between R and T. So I know I've got a line here. I know I've got R. I know I have a point T. And I know S is somewhere between them. Now we also have some more information over here on the left. Let's see. They're saying RS equals 2X. So we know this distance between R and S is going to be equal to 2x. We also know that st, that's this distance here, s to t, is equal to 3x. They're also telling us that rt, here's r all the way to t over here, is equal to 25. Okay, now we've got our picture. Let's go ahead and give ourselves some more space. All right, um, now here, let's go back to our, our main component of linear measure. We know linear measure, we add up uh, the small parts to give us the big part. So let's look at our small parts here. We've got RS, we know that's 2X. We've got ST, that's our other small part. We can add that, 3X, and we know that's gonna equal our big part, the whole line, which is RT, which is gonna be 25. Uh, from here, we can go ahead and solve using algebra. We can put our like terms together. 2x plus 5x is, sorry, 2x plus 3x is 5x is going to equal 25. We can divide both sides by 5, and we're going to get x equals 5. Are we done? No, what were they asking us to do? Remember, they wanted us to find our variable, so we found our x, good. They also want us to find st. So let's look back at our picture. We know that st is the distance from here to here. Do we have anything uh, labeled in our picture that can help us here? Yeah, we do. We have st. We know st is equal to 3x. Well, what is our x? Our x is 5. So we can take 5. We can go back up here. We know x equals 5. So we can plug that right back in. So we're going to have st equals 3 times 5. We know 3 times 5 equals 15. And we've done it. So we've got uh, our answers, x equals 5, and then st equals 15. So important to remember here, uh, read the question, see what they're asking us. They asked us for a variable and st. Uh, and then go ahead and draw yourself a picture. When you can give yourself uh, a good picture like this, it's going to be really easy to visualize and, and put the, uh, the smaller pieces together and add them up to equal the big piece like we were talking about. Okay, let's try real quick a different type of problem. Let's say we had a line here split up and we knew that these two pieces were congruent. We also knew that the whole distance was 12 feet. Let's say we had WX y for these points and they wanted to they want you to find wx what is the distance of w to x well we know wx is going uh, from this point here to this point here uh, we don't know what it is so let's go ahead and label what what do you do when you don't know the distance of something we can put in a variable let's say wx is equal to uh, our variable i'm going to use a as our variable since we already have an x here so A is the distance between W and X. Well, notice we've got this congruent line here. What is this line here congruent to? It's congruent to this line, X, Y. We've got one congruent dash here, one congruent dash here. So if we know if 
wx is a, we also know that xy is going to also have to be a because they're congruent. So we know wx is equal to a, we know xy is also equal to a. Now we have another situation where we can set up an equation and solve. We've got the small piece, wx, that's going to give us a plus the other small part, a, and that's going to equal to 12. Put our like terms together, we'll have 2a equals 12. Divide both sides by 2. And I'm running out of space. Whoops. Wrong button. And from there, we're going to get a equals 6. And uh, since we specified beforehand that wx was equal to a, we know that a equals 6, so we know that wx uh, is going to equal to 6. And we're done.